We've moved from the season of creation back, liturgically speaking, into the green of ordinary time. Sometimes that's called growing time. And what does ordinary time mean to us? I was thinking of a quote from a sequel to Anne of Green Gables, where Anne said to Marilla, I believe that nicest, sweetest days are not those on which anything very splendid or wonderful or exciting happens, but just those that bring simple little pleasures following one another softly, like pearls slipping off a string. The ordinary can mean ordered, it can mean numbered, it can mean regular and routine, and in this case, it means most of the year. Ordinary time doesn't have special feasts or holidays as part of it for us, but it doesn't mean that the individual days, moments, Sundays are any less special. I've been reading a little bit from Breathe, A Child's Guide to Ascension, Pentecost, and the Growing Time. And growing time, or ordinary time, lasts a long time. From the green leaf to the fallen leaf, over half the circle of the year. There aren't any big holidays, but amazing things are happening. It talks about the seeds being planted in the spring, popping up. And that ordinary time carries us through and occurs again in autumn when summer turns to fall and the cool evenings, blue skies, yellow goldenrod, hearing in the cries of geese heading south, seeing the pumpkins green on the vine, and also the milkweed heavy with fat pods bursting at the seams with feathery seeds. You might wonder where the wind will carry those. This is part of ordinary time. If ordinary time means numbered, it's part of the calendar, and it's most of the year without feasts, but lots of change, that's important to us. There are so many moments that we can notice and make holy. I want to show you some treasures. These are toddler treasures from ordinary time. Just moments outside. He didn't have any pockets, so he put them in mine. And here are some things that he found. Acorn caps, a single hot pepper from a plant, a little bit of alyssum, one of my favorite, very fragrant flowers, and a sprout a sunflower seed that a squirrel planted. He plucked it and yelled, a nature treasure, and put it in my pocket. He also found some fluffy things, those milkweed seeds that were mentioned in that book. This one might have been from our pollinator patch or maybe drifted from far away. And we're reminded that's just like the spirit, the breath of the spirit, goes everywhere. And every moment, every single breath, God is with us in the ordinary times. I wonder what you would like to make holy at this time of year, in ordinary time. I wonder what you will notice thinking about ordinary time throughout the calendar year. Ordinary time brings us from seed to sprout, to sunflower, and back to seed again. Some of the things we might do to consider the holiness of everyday moments would be to look around for nature treasures, petals, acorn caps. But we might also think about when we set the table or have everyday meals, grace, or moments where we can pray, be grateful, be in the moment. Brushing our teeth, an everyday ordinary thing, could have prayer and gratefulness in it as well. Or matching socks 
a simple chore, part of our routine and the everyday, but reminding us of goodness, reminding us of care of ourselves and each other. I'd like to invite you to pray a new way in this ordinary time. I found this Count Your Blessings in Color book by Sybil Macbeth, and she invites us to try praying as an action, because prayer, of course, can be sung or spoken. It can be silent or aloud, but it can also be something that you do. She is inviting us to doodle, using her doodles or our own, and coloring. And considering that an act of prayer and an active prayer, to start with the name of God that comes to your lips, that feels right to write, and then just thinking about things as they come. To me, I thought, God, our giver and forgiver, I'm so grateful for our daily bread, for the sunrise and sunset and twilight. The author invites us to actually color our prayers, write, doodle, and color, and that doing so can be prayerful. You'll find some of these in some pews for a while as well, and I'll have some examples in the Friday file that you can try. You might like to do this during a song, a prayer, a silent moment, just for fun. You might find, as I did, the simple act of sharpening a colored pencil actually was a really sensory, beautiful thing for me, bringing me back to ordinary times in the feel, the sound, and even the smell of the pencil crayon shavings. For this particular doodle, she gave a prompt saying, the choice of gratitude rarely comes without some real effort, but each time I make it, the next choice is a little easier, a little freer, a little less self-conscious. Every gift I acknowledge reveals another and another, until finally even the most normal, obvious, and seemingly mundane event or encounter proves to be filled with grace. That's a quote from Henry J. M. Nguyen, Return of the Prodigal Son. In this ordinary time, I hope that you find extraordinary things, and that perhaps you will number the days with that grace and gratitude of everyday things. <laughs>